The following video is intended for mature audiences. It contains horror elements, adult themes, and language that might not be suitable for younger viewers. bound to the abyss. Fear gripped me as I crossed the icy deck of the majestic dream. The arctic wind felt like a thousand tiny bites against my skin. My job was to solve oceanic mysteries, but this had become a chilling nightmare. I tasted the saltiness of sea spray on my tongue as I peered through a telescope, scanning for an inexplicable iceberg. As head of the Ocean Mysteries Research Division, I'd spent many nights studying reports and data about dimensional rifts at disaster sites, places where reality seemed to warp and unknown dangers emerged. My theories about supernatural maritime events were often mocked by my peers, but I believed something terrifying lurked in the depths of the ocean. The sudden change in the course of the majestic dream should have raised alarms. The crew's strange behavior and vacant expressions now made sense. Even the passengers seemed to shift between present-day tourists and ghost-like figures in old-fashioned clothes. A loud metallic noise rang out as the ship jolted again. We were far from any ice fields, water temperatures were normal, and sonar scans showed no underwater obstacles. Captain Richards appeared behind me, his eyes glowing eerily like a deep sea creature. Dr. Granger, he said with an empty voice that echoed as if it were underwater. Your work on maritime disasters interests us. His use of us set my heart pounding. Who exactly was us? His smile revealed sharp teeth reminiscent of a shark, while his crew stood still under the dim emergency lights that gave their skin an unnatural pallor. The sea takes what it wants, Richard said ominously, and tonight it wants you. The intercom crackled with a voice announcing we'd hit an iceberg and needed to abandon ship. Yet Richards remained silent with his eerie smile. A frightening realization dawned on me, the strange behavior of the crew, the unexpected change in course, the phantom iceberg. You're him, I managed. You're Captain Edward Smith. Richards' face changed, morphing into the ghostly image of the Titanic's ill-fated captain. The crew's modern uniforms dissolved into century-old clothing, covered with crystallized sea salt and slimy seaweed. Dr. Granger, Smith said in a powerful voice, we've been watching you. Your understanding of maritime mysteries makes you an ideal recruit for our eternal voyage. Water began to seep through the solid walls. The phantom crew stood still as it rose around their feet. Through impossible windows, I saw the ghostly form of the Titanic rising from the ocean depths, its broken hull reforming under ghastly light. What the hell was going on? The sea took everything from me, Smith said, pointing toward the changing ship. My ship, my crew, my life. Now I claim others, those who understand our cursed journey. Fear drove me forward. The grand ballroom had transformed into a terrifying mix of past and present. Lights alternated between modern fixtures and antique chandeliers, while passengers danced to music playing from an old phonograph amidst screams of terror. You can't escape, Smith's voice echoed ominously. The majestic dream is ours now, and soon you will join us. The icy floor crunched beneath my boots as the ship tilted. My mind was filled with years of academic research, theories about dimensional fractures at disaster sites, where reality seemed to unravel. The precision of my predictions was unnerving. Each aquatic catastrophe created passages for phantom ships to traverse, gathering new souls for their spectral crew. Smith materialized before me, extending a captain's hat saturated with centuries-old salt and thyme. It emanated an odd energy that made my skin prickle. Join us willingly, he proposed. Help us guide new spirits to our realm. Your knowledge of dimensional physics combined with our supernatural abilities could revolutionize these seas. The hat vibrated with ancient power, causing the air around it to hum. As he held it nearer, my mind filled with tales of ghost ships and their eerie crews passed down over hundreds of years.
An incredible force resided within the hat, but it carried a dreadful cost. I saw the stark truth in Smith's hazy eyes, endless servitude to the relentless sea, harvesting souls until even time ceased. I lunged forward, grabbing the hat from his spectral hand. The sea takes what it wants, I retorted. Tonight, it wants you, again. I hurled the hat into the roiling waves below us. Smith issued a sorrowful cry as his form dissipated like morning fog under sunlight. The ghostly crew vanished around us, and though normality struggled to reassert itself, irreversible harm had already been inflicted. The dimensional rift had expanded too far. The majestic dream convulsed violently one last time before breaking apart. I fell into waters so frigid they could kill instantly. Darkness enveloped me as I descended into nothingness. Yet curiously, the hat was back in my hand, its power vibrating through my numb fingers. Unseen hands hauled me into a lifeboat. The first light of dawn illuminated the vacant sea as rescue ships appeared from the fog. The survivors clustered together, their faces pale and weary from the terrors they'd experienced. But it wasn't over yet. The mist receded, revealing the Titanic in her ghostly splendor. As we bobbed in our lifeboat, haunting melodies floated through the air, beckoning us toward an unknown destination. I glanced down at the hat that had been passed down to me from Smith, who was now gone. But his curse lingered on, and it seemed that the hat had chosen its next victim, me. I stood up in the lifeboat, feeling a surge of energy as I put it on. Welcome aboard, I said, my voice reverberating across the water to the ghostly apparition of the Titanic. Your new captain has arrived. The survivors watched in terror as I stepped onto water that solidified beneath my feet like glass. Their lifeboat trailed behind me, drawn by invisible currents toward our common fate. As I stepped onto Titanic's spectral deck, Centuries of maritime knowledge flooded me once more while the ghostly crew paid homage to their new leader. Now I guide lost ships through dimensional storms, collecting souls for my eternal crew. Each disaster adds to our ranks. Each wreck feeds our power. My scientific knowledge combined with supernatural force creates rifts across every ocean. The hat sits heavy on my head as I stand at the phantom helm. Somewhere out there, other ships sail through dark waters. Other souls wait to join our dance. I've become what I once studied, a guardian of maritime mysteries, a shepherd of lost souls. The price of power is an eternal purpose. The cost of knowledge is an unending service. The Titanic still sails through dimensional rifts, captained by a woman who once sought to expose its secrets. We appear in fog and darkness, our phantom horns calling new souls to the dance. The curse spreads like ripples across time and space, forever sailing forever hunting, forever drowning. Watch for us in the mist. Listen to our music in the night. The eternal dance continues, and your invitation may come sooner than you think. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching.